Hello and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated that Russia continues violating international law. Such was Kyiv's reaction to the new decree signed by Vladimir Putin. The document allows residents of the occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk, regions in eastern Ukraine, to obtain Russian passports under a simplified procedure. To discuss this, we we'll welcome to our studio today Petro Burkovsky. He is the analyst and the head of the Center for Advanced Russia Studies at the National Institute for Strategic Studies. Hello and thank you for joining. Thank you for the invitation. Hello. So for our audience who may not know what is happening, on April 24th, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a decree that allows residents of the occupied territories to get or obtain Russian passports and Russian citizenship on a simplified procedure. And in Kiev, there has already been a response saying that um, Ukraine does not recognize those passports, those documents and that citizenship. And... Um, Ukraine also called on the international community to not recognize those documents either. Now, back to you, Pavel. What is happening? Is this some kind of a provocation? Uh, I would say yes and no. Uh, since uh, you, if we are speaking about provocation, that means that uh, it was done to provoke uh, Ukraine on the, to do certain things. However, uh, we are, have been living with the Russian aggression for the last five years, and mm. I think we uh, will live with this uh, kind of facts uh, for the next five years. So uh, the decision made by the Russian authorities, namely this decree, presidential decree, was not a kind of news uh, to Ukraine. Uh, we've already known uh, by saying we, I mean the, the people who are in charge of um, formulating and shaping the foreign and security policy, that Russia is going to do such things. And uh, um, in, in the end of the last year, the Russian Duma, the Russian parliament adopted the law which uh, uh, gave uh, the right and power to Russian president to uh, make and uh, to simplify the procedure of uh, giving uh, citizenship uh, to uh, citizens of other countries. And uh, this law uh, the provisions of this law, uh, uh, they allowed uh, presidents to do this for the countries where uh, there is a, uh, is, it was said that the serious uh, social economic conditions or a domestic conflict. And mm. uh, actually that was the very clear uh, inference uh, about to Ukraine? Uh, to Ukraine, right. Okay, uh, but speaking of the terms, why now? Why on the verge of presidential elections or right after them? Uh, for two reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, um, of course, uh, they wanted to uh, see what would be the reaction of the current president, outgoing president, and uh, the president-elect. Uh, right now we see that uh, there is no difference, uh, maybe there are differences in words, but there is no difference in intentions mm -hmm. of the current outgoing president Poroshenko and president-elect Zelensky. So uh, both uh, actually um, condemned this step and uh, moreover I would say that the president-elect Zelensky uh, um, has already uh, reacted quite smartly uh, towards this uh, provocation. He said that uh, Ukraine uh, would uh, grant uh, its citizenship to uh, the people uh, who, uh, whose rights uh, are violated or have been violated uh, uh, by Russian authorities and I think it's a, it's a smart move uh, in the response. It is, but in accordance with the Russian law, it is okay to have a multiple citizenship, whereas according to Ukrainian law, it is forbidden uh, well, to have another citizenship. So my question is, would those people who obtain uh, Russian citizenship and obtain uh, the passports of the Russian Federation on a simplified procedure, will they automatically lose the citizenship in Ukraine? Three points. First, is the, from the legal point of view, uh, the second citizenship is not forbidden. Uh, it's just said in our constitution that there is a single citizenship uh, full stop. There is no um, uh, direct clause about prohibition of another citizenship. These clauses can be included in the uh, current law on citizenship and it is really it is forbidden. 
uh, to have uh, second or third or some other f uh, citizenship of foreign country. And uh, there are certain uh, provisions when uh, Ukrainians can lose automatically. And one of the most serious provisions if uh, Ukrainians uh, are in service of uh, security or military structures of the foreign state. That means that they automatically uh, lose uh, Ukrainian citizenship. Uh, the second point is that um, and this uh, Russian decision is more of a danger for other uh, Russian neighbors and uh, members of European Union than to Ukraine. Because uh, Ukraine, I think, is just uh, the first uh, step uh, to allow Ukrainians to have this, uh, to obtain Russian citizenship according to the simplified procedure. However, uh, now uh, nobody limits president, uh, presidential power, uh, Putin's power, to issue such decrees uh, and uh, simplify procedures for, for instance, for, fin uh, for Finnish uh, citizens, citizens, for Estonian citizens for Lithuanian or Latvian citizens uh, on the grounds that these territories uh, some someday in the past were the parts of the Russian Empire and that uh, uh, that these people uh, can be uh, bearers of la Russian language, can be Russian speakers or as uh, his uh, aide uh, Vladislav Surkov said not only Russian speakers but also people who are Russian thinkers uh, can be can, uh, can be uh, can become uh, uh, beneficiaries mm. of this decision of uh, the um, of this uh, of this de decision, and the third point is, of course, uh, uh, I think that pragmatically, uh, what uh, are the real intentions behind this decision is to see uh, whether Russian uh, citizenship uh, is popular in the occupied territories. And uh, after this, uh, when they will monitor how many admissions, uh, um, uh, uh, submissions are submitted to, to obtain these passports uh, during the certain period of time, and then they will decide if there are uh, a lot of submissions, then maybe uh, the next step would be the gradual annexation of the occupied territories. And then they see that, the, that uh, Russian citizenship is not so popular at all in the occupied territories, maybe, and maybe they would look for some other options, or maybe they would just freeze the situation as it is. So there are basically three ways to unfold the picture further. Now I want to stop on the, um, the second point. Uh, so that makes Ukraine a test site, and yet another test site for Russia to see how Russian citizenship could be perceived all over the world. If well, because naturally, at first we would be talking about the close neighboring countries, but in general, I think, and it's not only me thinking; it's the whole world. Putin and his power are thinking about. Well, I don't think that Putin is thinking about the whole world, but as just being a leader of empire, I think he is. But. Uh, but still, I think, uh, the, as they put uh, it very strictly, that they are interested in an uh, exclusive sphere of their in interests, and mm. then wait, and, uh, when they include certain countries into this exclusive sphere of interest, you can see uh, very easily that these countries, uh, uh, sometimes in the past, were the parts of the Great Russian Empire in the uh, 19th, 18th and uh, 20th, beginning of the 20th century. Um, could it be that uh, could it be that the Kremlin is testing what the reaction of the international community could be on Russia's possible attempt to recreate its empire? Uh, yes, every time they make a kind of decisions, whether military or diplomatic or this uh, internal legal decisions, they test uh, the uh, reaction of the international community. Moreover, I would say uh, you mentioned that uh, Ukraine is a kind of testing ground. I would say right. Uh, Russia is testing its uh, military units, uh, modern, mil modern military uh, uh, equipment. Uh, uh, they also uh, have tested in Ukraine uh, modern political technologies, and that was even before the conflict and after the conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, they are looking how the world reacts. And right now, I can say that the reaction, uh, the international reaction, uh, was uh, very, very, what to say, uh, weak. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the third point you have already voiced also, that is uh, Russia trying to check whether the Russian citizenship is popular among the occupied territories, and if it is popular, then maybe there would be a full-fledged annexation of the territories in eastern Ukraine that are right now right now turn, turn up by the hybrid war. Um, 
if that happens, because we've all, we are always, for, for the first consecutive year that the war has been going on, we're always discussing the possibility of a full-scale invasion. Right. If that happens, if Russia decides that the Russian citizenship is popular and those people living on the occupied territories would want to be a part of Russia, would want to be citizens of Russia, um, what would what should Ukraine's reaction be to that? What should Ukraine's actions be in this situation? Well, uh, despite uh, what Russia plans, whether it is a second citizenship or increasing military presence in Ukraine or uh, putting in place uh, energy blockade or some kind of other trade or economic blockade. Uh, the main response of Ukrainian government uh, should be uh, the uh, internal improvement of life of the people. Because uh, being a part of a uh, team of uh, researchers uh, who conducted research in the Donbass region, there was a regional research, a regional opinion poll then. We also polled people uh, on uh, so-called checkpoints uh, mm -hmm. on the line of contact. And um, according to the latest survey, it was conducted in April on, on the, in the four checkpoints in Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. 60% of people who moved between occupied and, free and liberated areas uh, consider themselves as citizens of Ukraine, not, be not because of their passport, but because as a kind of identity. Mm -hmm. Only 5% uh, said that uh, they consider themselves citizens of Russian Federation or USSR, and only 5% said that they consider themselves citizens of so-called Mm -hmm. uh, separatists, uh, stateless. DPR, Ireland. Uh, right. Okay. And so what my point is that uh, <laughs> The uh, only uh, major thing that the Ukrainian government can do is to improve economic situation and to continue reforms. Because what about Russia's economic situation? If, uh, if th there would be a number of people willing to obtain Russian citizenship, what effect would it, uh, would it imply on the Russia's economic situation? Because clearly those people who would obtain Russian citizenship would need to have a job. Well, it's a very interesting question and we shall see uh, what the central uh, Russian government uh, would give to Rostov Oblast, because mm -hmm. if there is a kind of uh, um, procedure for obtaining citizenship, that would be uh, done in Rostov Oblast and maybe in... Uh, uh, so, so we shall see whether it will be a kind of demographic explosion in the Rostov Oblast and whether the, uh, the number of uh, retirees uh, would increase in the Rostov Oblast and whether Rostov Oblast, the local budget, the budget of Rostov Oblast, uh, have enough uh, sufficient funds to give uh, pensions to those people. Right now we have no information about this and we can only uh, sit and wait and see uh, what will happen. However, it also will be an indication. So if uh, Rostov Oblast would not, get, would not get an additional funds, that means that Russia is not going to um, to give the people who obtain Russian citizenship under new conditions, uh, that the Russia is not going to give these people the same level of social benefits mm -hmm. as, uh, as it gives to its uh, uh, citizens. Well, even though Russia's move to propose to Ukrainian citizens a uh, simplified procedure of obtaining Russian passports was slicky, hopefully Ukrainian nation is smart enough uh, to do that. Thank you so much for coming and clarifying the whole situation for us. That was Petro Burkovsky. He is the analyst and the head of Center for Advanced Russia Studies at the National Institute for Strategic Studies. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for more.